Hey guys and welcome to a new video on Byte Geek. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a Q&A session. Uh, not about me, but about the MSI B550A Pro motherboard that I reviewed a number of months ago. Uh, it is by far the most popular video on the channel so far. So link up above if you've, uh, if you've not seen that. But uh, a lot of questions came out of this uh, video. And... Um, a lot of repeat questions as well so what i thought i'd do is i kind of like put together the most common uh, questions that were asked about this board and answer them for you in a, uh, a single video so let's get to it so first up and this is probably the the most common question i had or most popular question i had i guess about the board and, and that is about rgb you know does it have any rgb on it does it support rgb does it support argb and um, basically, yeah, in terms of RGB on the board itself, in, in you know, effects that are on the board, it doesn't have any of that at all. Uh, so if you want something that, that's lit up like a Christmas tree, you'll, uh, you'll have to go and get a different board. So in terms of supporting things like uh, RGB fans or something like that, then it has a single four pin RGB LED header. So you know, if you want to plug in a standard uh, you know, RGB LED strip or something like that, you can plug that in there. And it has two, what they call rainbow, so these are effectively ARGB um, headers, and it has two of those on the board. And the, uh, the effects will be controlled through uh, Mystic Light on the uh, Dragon Center software. And uh, you, obviously you'll need to download that from the MSI website if you want to use that. So really the next one was to do with the number of fans and lots of questions around about, you know, I'm buying this case and will it support that number of fans? And they were quite um, quite closely related to the uh, RGB questions, to be fair. But uh, this board has lots of uh, headers for fans on it. So I think pretty much every question I answered on that, uh, you know, everybody went away being able to... Uh, use this board with the, with their case but what i'll do is i'll just run through uh the fan headers uh, that you get on the on the board and again you know you you can see on this diagram you can see where those fan headers are going to be so obviously it's got a cpu fan header so it's a four pin fan header for that and it's got six four pin uh, chassis fan headers so that should be plenty for you to be able to scatter your fans around uh, your case and it's also got one four pin water pump header so if you're going to have uh, water cooling in there then you, you're sorted with this as well so uh, as i say plenty of fan options uh, on the board uh, it should cover off most people's requirements one of the other questions quite a few people asked this one to be fair um, was around about wi-fi and whether it comes with wi-fi so obviously, you know, it's not a top end board. Wi-Fi generally only comes into, you know, your, your top end boards. So this board doesn't come with Wi-Fi. Uh, you, there is a um, um, MATX version of the board, uh, which does come with Wi-Fi. So if you want that, I would, you know, and you're happy with that format, I would recommend you get that version. Additionally, what you can do is you can buy yourself a Wi-Fi adapter and uh, just plug it into one of the slots on the motherboard. Problem solved. So, you know, that's probably going to be cheaper than going for one of the more expensive uh, motherboards, to be fair, because they are actually tw um, quite cheap cards nowadays. But it just depends upon what you're looking for, really. So out of the box, you don't get Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth as well. So not many people asked about Bluetooth, but just putting that out there as well. So one of the other big questions was around CPU compatibility and just a ton of questions about that you know will it support older cpus will it support the newer ones uh, you know does it the board come pre-flashed to support the new cpus so what i would say is um, basically if you're buying stock of this now uh, then the board should be pre-flashed to support new c new cpus what i'm going to put up on the screen is the official list of supported cpus from the msi uh, website for this board uh, if your CPU is not on that list, then certainly if it's an older CPU, I think you can uh, pretty much say that it's not going to support that officially. And uh, whilst you, somebody may be able to get it working, you're not going to get any support for it if you have any kind of issues. 
So the flashing the BIOS is a really easy process. You know, if your CPU is not supported yet, MSI have released a, a bunch of BIOS updates over the last couple of months to uh, support new CPUs, but you don't need uh, an older CPU in order to flash the BIOS. You can just do it um, via USB and it is a really straightforward process. So yeah, as I say, list of CPUs on the screen. So the next one really was around a uh, kind of a RAM for this motherboard and uh, you know, not a huge number of questions on this, but there were some significant questions about this. And really uh, what I would say is I'm using uh, HyperX Fury 3200 megahertz and you know i only chose that because the corsair vengeance uh, ram wasn't available it was out of stock at the time so either of those are going to be good uh, on this board and you know with the with the HyperX, I, I get you know i've not tried taking it above 3200 but it works absolutely fine so either of those will be great on this board and i guess Finally, really, some queries around about the M.2 slots and what you can and can't do on that. So this is a not an issue with the board itself. It's a B550 platform issue. So if you plug uh, a Gen 4 uh, M.2 SSD into the, the primary slot and you've got a, your graphics card fitted, then um, you know if you go and use the secondary M.2 slot for a Gen 3 card, then you effectively lose um, one of the um, PCI slots on the on the motherboard. So you're only left with kind of like the PCI times one uh, slots, which will be fine if you wanted to add in a Wi-Fi card, something like that. But uh, you know, if you're wanting to do uh, maybe a capture card and it's a bit, you know a, a longer card, then you may have issues there. So really, you kind of need to, you know, this is one of those things, I did talk about this in the, in the initial video, you know, this is where you need to weigh up whether you should go for, uh, you know, like the, the X570 or something like that, because it doesn't have that limitation, but obviously it's a much, much more expensive motherboard overall. So, you know, it really is a case of, you know, looking at what your needs are, not just now, but potentially in the future, and uh, seeing whether you know that is going to work for you but i think i actually said at the time in the video for the vast majority of people that isn't actually going to be any kind of issue so you know you should be absolutely fine so i'm not going to answer this one here uh, because i've got a video coming up about it but lots of people talk about vrms on the motherboard and overclocking and stuff like that so i'm at the moment doing some testing on overclocking on this uh, it is quite positive, but obviously the Ryzen platform on certain CPUs is quite limiting anyway in terms of overclocking. Um, but certainly from my experience so far, it is a very, very stable board. And um, yeah, things look very positive in, in that regard. Yeah, I think you just need to look at you know what you're looking at putting in, the, in this, uh, this board and how power hungry that's going to be. And you know, being realistic about you, your overclocks, you know, this isn't a 200, 230 pound motherboard. You know, this is something around about the 100 pound mark. So, you know, if you want to have an extreme overclock, you're gonna to need to spend more money on the motherboard to get the better, uh, you know, components on, on that board and the, the higher feature set. But overall guys, you know, I've been running this board now for nearly six months and it's performed absolutely flawlessly. Uh, it's really rock solid stable and, um, you know, if you if you don't want all that RGB and you just want a nice stealth, discreet kind of uh, system, it's perfect for that. If you do want the RGB, then it's going to support all of that. Uh, it's got a good supported CPU list, and you know if you can get it for the right price, and uh, you know you understand the limitations of the the B550 platform, then for me, you know, it's a no-brainer. This this is. This is a, a, an ideal board for you there, rather than having to spend double or nearly triple the amount of money on a, on a motherboard. Okay guys, hope you found the video useful. If you did, hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel, really does help. Uh, yeah, any questions, comments, yeah, drop them down below and I'll try and answer them for you. But as always, thanks for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.